What's going on, fanboys and fangirls? Welcome to another Review Point podcast coming to you from fanboysanonymous.com. I am your host, as always, Tony Mango, and this target for this episode is going to be Season 3 of Jessica Jones, the latest and last of the Marvel Netflix series. And uh, normally what I do here is on the Review Point, I give you a hits and misses breakdown. It's kind of the point of... You know, the whole review point kind of concept and stuff. But honestly, I don't know if I'm going to be able to give you a whole lot of the balances of the hits and the misses when it comes to this. Uh, I'm going to kind of do this a little bit on the fly. It's like 8 in the morning. Uh, I've been, been for the most part, binge watching this. Uh, I wasn't able to actually like full on binge it because when they start these at 3 in the morning on the East Coast... And they are a slog to get through. It's hard to actually watch 13 hours of footage and, you know, kind of get through the whole thing in one sitting. But, you know, I've been up for a long, long time now. And I kind of wanted to give you a breakdown of as much as I could. And part to actually kind of save you the effort of watching this, which is going to kind of get into the spoiler-free version of this. Normally what I do is a spoiler-free version. And then I get into the spoilers a little bit later. I'll give you a warning when I get into that, but we're doing the uh, spoiler-free version right now. Um, it sucks. Uh, this is not the worst season that has been out there. That is probably either one of the two other seasons of Jessica Jones or the last season of Luke Cage or the Iron Fist one. Or I don't know. I mean, I've been really struggling to enjoy these quite a bit. From like, If you boil down every single one of these seasons, I always have the same criticisms and they never learned. I mean, we've had, I don't know how many seasons of this by now and they, they just never learned. It was 13 episodes again and they didn't need 13 episodes. And I feel like if it would have been eight, it would have been pretty decent. And if some of the decisions that they made maybe weren't made and you know, it's just, you don't need to watch it at all there's no reason for you to watch this especially knowing that it's already been canceled and that it's not continuing and that there's i'll tell you right now there's no solid finish to the whole series where it's like you know that wraps up the whole thing and now we know what's happened with iron fist and whatever no you don't that's a spoiler in a way that you just you just don't need to know that uh like that it's not going to go and amount to anything so i'm not really spoiling anything on that but I think that this is a complete skip. If you have absolutely loved the previous two seasons of Jessica Jones, then by all means, go ahead and watch it. But I feel like it's even underwhelming if you like that, too. Because the way that they end this is just kind of like, all right, well, that was the thing. And I think that it kind of ends in a disappointing way. And it's disappointing kind of all the way through. And the whole thing is just sort of blah. Um, Yeah, so... Spoiler free version. There you go. That's the spoiler free thing. So, warning from this point on spoilers. I'm going to break down some more things here and there. So, uh, by all means, if you don't want to know what happens throughout the whole season, then this is the point where you stop and you come back to it a little bit later after you've seen it or something. But if you don't mind what happens and not knowing whatever is going on, then keep listening, you know? So, if it feels like I'm kind of annoyed, and I kind of don't want to do this and all the other kind of stuff like that. It's because I kind of am. I mean, I normally what I have liked to do in the past with this, and I learned my lesson, is that I like to do a running commentary. And I'll watch every episode and I'll just type out my random thoughts. And it'll be things like, on the more positive side of, th- side of things, of being like, man, these always these shows always make me want uh, Chinese food. And, you know, oh, that was a funny line here and some different things like that. And I was just like, you know what? I can't do that again this time around. I had 13 hours of watching these, multiple seasons, multiple, yeah, I'll give it another shot, I'll give it another shot, I'll give it another shot. I feel like I wasted so much time watching these shows. And uh, I'm going to talk about some very generalized things. I'm going to talk about some very specific things. Uh, I have some notes that I had written down here and there, but... At the same time, I don't want to just, like, I don't know, read every single one of them verbatim or everything like that. But uh, 
one of the, the things that I didn't like about this season, and it's just not a matter of like the Jessica Jones character or any of the kind of stuff like that. It's poor writing is they introduce these concepts and it's so blatantly transparent why they're doing it. Like, you know, it would be interesting if we have this super powered person not use her powers, like the spleen thing. So she gets stabbed and this is just a way to nerf her when it's convenient for the plot. And once they get rid of that for the first like three episodes, it never comes up again. Not a single time after that. So she just like magically gets better. And why did that happen? It would have been better if they would have had not uh, like that issue at all and figured out a smarter way to make her vulnerable. Because the only reason that they gave her the spleen thing was to make her a little vulnerable here and there for the first little bit when they're trying to like slog through and get through the rest of the slog is not the right term for that. But you know, I mean, the whole thing feels like it's slogging through. It's a term that means like dragging on and whatever for those who might not know. Um, But that's the thing though. They're just stretching things out again. Like they have had like a dozen seasons of these shows and they never learned their lesson. And when you see something like that happen at this point, I'm trained enough that I'm thinking to myself, Oh, the spleen thing is not going to matter. This is just a means to have her be like, oh, I don't know why she why doesn't she deal with the spleen thing for a couple of episodes? That'll be interesting, huh? And it isn't. Why not show some emotional growth? Why does she have to start back at square one at the beginning of the season? And this happens with everything too. Like we get this character Eric. I don't talk about Eric because Eric, in a lot of ways, I liked Eric's character, but eh, you know, in some ways, not as much. But it's so obvious. Like, why does Eric leave to take his sister back? He he takes his sister away for his sister to come right back again. And the reason why? It's because they had nothing for him to do for two episodes or so. So they just needed to write him out off. And they didn't want to completely write off the sister. So she just comes back anyway. It's like they looked at the situation and they said, fuck, we don't know what to do with Eric. I know. How about he just goes away? And that's how they figure out this kind of stuff. Why does Malcolm take time off for the same reason? Why is Hogarth uh, doing the stuff that Hogarth is doing? Why does Salinger have to sit out in the hospital? Well, because we've got this whole Dorothy death situation that's taking up our focus. And, hey, stop paying attention to the Salinger thing for a little bit. We didn't know what to do with him, so we just figured we'd ignore him for a little bit. In wrestling terms, for those who follow Smartground Moment, this is bad booking where you can see through what their goal is. You know, why is Shane McMahon beating The Miz? Oh, it's because they want the Roman Reigns story to benefit from that, and the Shane McMahon thing is supposed to be leading to the Roman Reigns thing. Why is this character doing this sort of action? Well, that's because they have nothing better for that character to do, and they just need to get them to a certain point. It's it's like they... The characters are doing things because they, as writers, didn't know what else to do and forced them to go in that direction, as opposed to, wouldn't this be the the next logical step? Okay, well then, how do we get to that point, and let's get them on that path and everything? It's kind of like they reversed wrote this, and they I feel that way with a lot of the other things. Like, they thought to themselves... Well, we want to, for some reason, make Trish, like, the main villain. I don't know why. Like, why was this show ending, for instance, as Trish being, like, the big bad guy? Like, why is she the nemesis? Why is she the the villain, the evil one at the end? It's stupid. She was the same. She ended as the bad person at the end of the last season. So, didn't they already kind of say everything that they needed to say here? Why did this need to be depressing at the end of that that's just I, I don't see where they were going here is it like oh this is real deep because we made the two sisters have to do that it's not deep uh remember the guy that was in the last season these are random notes i know but i'm bouncing around on the same kind of topics and just complaining about stuff because these are all misses obviously do you remember that guy from the hallway in the last season that they spent a buttload of time focusing on well, they wrote him off because they have a new love interest that they wanted to utilize. Characters are just props. 
it's uh, Hogarth has another another love interest. Is that the only story that they can tell with her? So they just kind of replace people. It's like, well, who do we have Hogarth and Jessica Jones fuck in this season? I know we'll make up this character and we'll like ignore the other one and everything. They're just props, and everything is so soap opera, groan inducing elements like the dialogue in particular between Jess and Trish is just so like, Oh my God, I get the point that you're trying to make here. Why is everything so like, Oh my God, everything is the most, ugh, kind of thing in the world all the time for every single character. If it's Eric talking, if it's Malcolm talking, Malcolm is just like the whole time. He's just a sourpuss. And I realized while watching this, what I don't like about these shows and what makes them different from the MCU films is that it's almost like somebody saw how the MCU movies allow for characters to talk to each other and have real emotions. And they mistook that for the type of attitude that the CW shows have, like the Flash and Arrow, which is melodrama. They think that they can be, quote, dark and gritty and that that means that they have to have everybody be moody and pissy all the time rather than actually having just a darker story. Characters who are a pill and are always depressed and always arguing with each other isn't how you get dark and gritty. That works for characters who are dark, like the Punisher. The Punisher is a dark character. He is a guy with a lot of villainous tendencies who had his family killed and he just takes it out on everybody he is a dark character jessica jones should be a dark character because she has ptsd and she has this need to push people away and all this kind of stuff but she should be the dark character not she and every single person around her why is Trish the big villain out of this whole thing? Why is she suffering every single episode constantly? Malcolm is not doing anything but suffering all the time. Hogarth is just like the worst person all the time and just a constant representative of like, well, this is a terrible person. Literally every single supporting character on this show every single day is having the worst day ever. And that makes Jessica Jones not stand out. Because instead of her being the character that has that kind of darker edge and she, everybody else is, you know, something that can reflect something off of her, it's just making her the leader of a pack of a bunch of miserable fucks. And that's not fun to watch. It's like if The Breakfast Club was instead of the jock and the princess and the nerd and Ali Sheedy's like the the uh outcast and Judd Nelson's the the bully the delinquent whatever the reason why that that movie is good is because all those characters are reflecting off of each other this is like if every character was just Ali Sheedy's outcast and that's not an interesting story you know but I got to episode like three or so and I'm like I'm de I desperately want this to just fucking end and it came to episode 11 in particular, and I'm like, that episode is literally showing the same scenes that we had seen before. W why is that another thing? Why, why did we need to see the same exact scenes from the other person's point of view when it's not really all that interesting because you can show me just a couple extra parts of these things and do it in 10 minutes? You don't need to show the whole entire scene again. It's like running through the whole fucking series. And I, that episode, I ended up fast forwarding through everything that wasn't, that didn't look like it was brand new. And it ended up being like 38 minutes worth of the episode or something like that. It was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, this whole like Malcolm storyline with uh, his girlfriend thing and then him with the hooker or whatever. Didn't enjoy that. Didn't enjoy Hogarth with the whole. I'm, I want to kill myself, but that's not going to come into play for pretty much any other time other than that. 
uh, I didn't care about her trying to get the love of her life back and all that. I just, that felt like that was dragging on. I really hate the idea that Hellcat, the whole Trish thing was like, it was just leading up to her being a villain. Why? Dorothy was the best part of this whole thing. Like <laughs> the Dorothy stuff felt like it actually maybe served a little bit of a purpose. And I liked Costa but Costa is just there to give somebody like, here's your motivation for the scene and whatever. Like he's not a really fully fledged out character and everything like that. Um, I kind of liked the assistant being like flipping about her job. She was okay. She was more of a hit than a lot of other things. Discount Eric Bana, the one who's playing Eric. Uh, he, for the most part was okay, but at the same time, I got a little tired of, uh, the way that they used his character, like, I, I kind of wanted to see him not be just, like, again, like, a prop in certain scenes, and just kind of, like, you know what I hate about these kind of shows? I hate it when people show up to deliver two lines of dialogue, and then they leave, and it's like, okay, so you had the character walk, or drive, or take a subway, or whatever, completely across town, to say, I just wanted to show up to just say, like, I believe in you, and then leave? That's a fucking phone call. Like, it's so manufactured, and I just... I just didn't enjoy this pretty much, like, at all. It, it wasn't the worst season out of anything. It wasn't the hardest to get through. They did incorporate some elements that I did, like, you know... I tend to want to root for the Malcolm character. I tend to want to root for Trish. I tend to want to root for... Uh, a lot of the different characters, like, on the sidelines that aren't the biggest deal in the world, like, I mean, if they would have incorporated Eric more in a different way, then he would have been a better character, I think, but, like, those three, like, Hogarth, I just, uh, I feel like they had something. The first, when we first got introduced to Hogarth, I feel like they had something and I feel like they just didn't know what to do with her. And these seasons have just been like, I don't know, let's give her this random story to fill that in. And anyway, it's always filler. Everything's always filler. And you know what? I'm happy that these are over. It sucks that it it's over in a certain way because I liked Charlie Cox. I like that uh, Luke Cage popped up in this. That was cool. Uh, and I like my Coulter as Luke Cage and I liked some things about pretty much every single one of these seasons. There's there's something to take away from every single one of these shows that has been good, but it's just muddled with so much crap. And I feel like after watching all these seasons worth of all these Netflix shows, when push comes to shove, my big takeaway of the whole thing is like, well, Vincent D'Onofrio is a great kingpin. And like, Bullseye was great, and, like, Daredevil, for the most part, was the one that was the easiest one to get through, and some elements of Luke Cage were great, but out of the two seasons of Luke Cage, the stuff that's worth it might have been, like, nine episodes worth of stuff, and if that would have been a one-season, ten-episode type of thing, and they would have not dragged things out as much, then Luke Cage would have been one hell of a miniseries. And if Jessica Jones, if they wouldn't have had this type of an ending, uh, I hated the ending of this, but if it would have been the story, if you, again, I'm going to use the phrase, if you boil it down, if you take the first, the second, and the third season of Jessica Jones, and you tell the story of a girl who got into an accident, and her family died, and she got powers, and she was taken in by the walkers, and she grew up to be this pissy kind of person and it's like the sisterhood between tree and trish and trish slowly throughout the series trish becomes hellcat and she becomes a superhero and they deal with dorothy and jessica deals with her emotional issues and she deals with her ptsd when it comes to Kilgrave, and she learns from that and she starts to become a better person she struggles a little bit of like the hero game thing and she becomes a hero and all that. If you just give me a breakdown like that, then that could be a good story. 
but not if you have like, oh, I got the incest twins and this one thing, and then we've got like, you know, it's just all this filler crap, and I just, I feel like I wasted my time. So I hope that you just listened to this, because this is only 20 minutes of me telling you all this crap, and that you don't bother watching any of this, because I don't think that they deserve all that credit, and I'll give them credit for some things, like this. Uh, the assistant character was the first uh, trans actor that has been in the whole thing, so it's like, while well, they're trying to do stuff like that, and if that's the whole purpose that you're watching the show is for all the representation stuff like that, then by all means, watch that. But to me, I feel like while some of that stuff obviously is working in the right trajectory, I feel like maybe they're getting a little bit lost of like pushing that as like one of their main focal points. And that shouldn't be because I'm not watching the show for politics. I'd be watching MSNBC if that was the case. Um, it's just something that's like, well, that's not a redeeming quality for me. Like, okay, they've got that actor is that who they hired. And does that make the story more interesting? No. So you get a pat on the back for that, but can you write better? You know, like, like can you have more interesting characters? Can you have more uh, developed plots? Can you not drag your story out all that long? Like those are the issues that I have with this more than anything. It's just like, it's the same as everything else. It's, Again, I've used this word quite a bit. I think recently it's unnecessary. Like, I didn't need to watch 13 hours worth of this story because not only was the story ultimately unsatisfying in the end, and Salinger, like, was an interesting character and an interesting villain that maybe had four episodes worth of material, and that's why they wrote him out, and then he wasn't all that interesting beyond that point. I just feel like I didn't need to watch this. Like, uh, you know, why bother spending all that much time? And, yeah. So this is a miss. I say skip it. I didn't like a whole lot of things. Uh, pretty much the thing that I... Uh, no Turk in this one either. What the fuck? No Turk? Big mess. Um, the, the biggest hit that I had out of this whole thing was they mentioned Captain America and they mentioned the raft. So that's my, like, your big thumbs up is that you remembered that you were supposed to be in the MCU. Yeah. So, yeah, I just spent 13 hours watching this, and I'm going to spend time editing this and whatever like that. I really hope that you didn't. But I want to know what you have to say about this one way or another. So drop a comment below and tell me what you think. What were your highlights? What were your low points? Whatever the case may be. If you are on YouTube, subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. If you're on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, any of the other kind of things that are audio only, go to fanboysanonymous.com and leave a comment there. Leave me a rating, whatever the case may be. Follow these accounts on Facebook and Twitter. Follow me personally on Facebook and Twitter and all that other kind of stuff. Hit up the Patreon if you want to see more content from me on Fanboys Anonymous because that's always the big motivator. And let's face it, I don't have all the time in the world. And uh, the Patreon helps a lot when it comes to that. The T Public and Red Bubble shops are for merchandise. So if you're interested in picking up some, like, I don't know, t shirts and stuff, then go to there. And anything else you'll find on fanboysanonymous.com. But that's going to do me in for this one. Thank you for listening, everybody. It's time for me to geek out.